What's going on, Bulls Nation? And welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast, presented to you by PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. That's Big Dave. He's Bow B W L Sports on Twitter. Will the Goat Gottlieb in the circle and on Twitter at Won't Gottlieb. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. And we got our producer and our pal Joey hanging hey, out Joey. with us here today, per usual, hanging out at our West Loop Studios. I just had a fun uh, early start to my CHGO day. Hopped on with the Bears crew, did the Bears show amazing, right? with Nick and with Hogue. Mm-hmm. Awesome time. Wasn't it? Showed everyone just how far behind I am on what the Bears <laughs> offseason has looked like because we were actually busy following the Bulls until April. Yeah, that was the thing. I was I, We were not used to. No, not I, at all. I was like, oh, Bears draft in February. I was like, let's go. <laughs> let's get into it. No, man, that, that's a great show. Uh, I did it uh, earlier. It, yep. was, it was a great show. I can't wait to have them. I'm sorry for their field. audience that they had to put up with me after getting you. It's all right, man. You know, it's all right. But there is no me without you, sir. This is what it is right here. So they're always <laughs> going to see you when they see me. That's what you don't understand. Uh, Will, how are you, sir? How are things down in Brazil? Things are good. I It's very rainy today, so I spent all morning preparing for this show. I have a piece coming out probably next week at some time going over every single move that AK and Eversley have made so far. I'm very excited to talk about it. Uh, it's it's intense. There's a lot, a lot of good stuff going on. Well, I, I, I'm a little upset. You're not a Fast and Furious movie watcher, are you? Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, you are? Okay, so it's all about family. Please, please tell me you have at least one time went outside and said, this is Brazil. Tell me you did uh, that. As, I haven't done it yet, but that is what I'm doing as soon as we're done recording. Nine here. Fast and Furious movies is that line from? Hilariously, nine. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, that's the only I'm one playing. I've seen. That's the, <laughs> that's only, the only one you've seen? Where he does that, oh, that's the right. only one I've seen. Oh, this is Brazil. Well, actually, I think it was eight, like, to be honest. Uh, I think The Rock the Rock was in it. It was the first one The Rock I think was it in. was, like, five. Oh, it was early in, oh, it was, like, five? I, I don't know. There's a, I lost track. Oh, snap, you're right. It was Fast Five. You're right. You know what? Let's He's go. right. Let's He's go. absolutely right. It was Fast Five. Uh, which is the one that, um, shoot, her name just jumped out of my brain. Uh, the blonde actress who was uh, in Arrested Development in one of the later seasons as, like, the girl who's, like. Trying to, wait, I'm trying to picture her. Blonde actress in... You're not giving us a lot to work with. Uh, She won her Oscar for that movie Monster. Oh, Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. Which which fast movie is she in? She's been in the last, what, three? Okay. Like, she's been she's been in there. Well, she's the, a character. The, I think it was the first one that she popped up in. Okay. And I was watching it with some buddies, and I was uh-huh. like... You know, like, she does the, her first scene with what's-his-name. Vin Diesel. Yeah, thank you. And they just strike up this... And like, I was asking my buddies, I was like, wait, so which character is this from which one of these movies that, she, like, I miss? And, she, and they're like, no, this is just a new character yep. they're just throwing in there. New villain. Yep. See, the first problem was... That series was, takes all kinds of liberties. Your, your first problem was you walking in thinking... That was your first mistake. <laughs> you walked in thinking. You don't go in thinking in a Fast and Furious movie. Well, but they're you recurring characters. Like, there's a core of characters in all of them, right? Like, sure. you got Ludacris. Yeah. You got uh, Vin Diesel. Uh-huh. Who, who Tyrese. Else? Right, Tyrese. Pa- uh, Paul Walker. Paul Rest Walker, R.I.P. Um, Michelle Rodriguez. Was it uh, Michelle Rodriguez? And has it, uh, what's her name from G- uh, Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't Na- know her name. Na- Natalie Emanuel. Yes, shout yeah. out to her. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Like you got, you only just need to know Vin Diesel and and, and Ludacris, and you're good, right, Will? It just it, the great the beauty of that series is that it went from like a car racing movie, and then it went and it just like it got bigger and bigger and bigger, yep. and now it's just it cannot be contained. It's, it can't. It's They're out of space uh, now magic. in a car. Yeah, Matthew in the <laughs> comments saying, "Have they hit space yet?" Figure yes. that's next after flying through buildings they and did. cars. They did. I think I heard that they're going to space. Are, they are they going to space in the next one? No, they went. This happened in the one that just, they went to space in a car. It's, so where did they the go from there? natural progression from street Mars? racing Mars? to <laughs> jumping through buildings to yes. outer space. Yes, man. Like I'm watching it, and and you know this is ridiculous, and you're still like more. <laughs> Give me more of this foolishness. They went to space in a car, in a car, and like a makeshift astronaut suit. They went okay. to space. Ludacris and Tyrese in space. So now we, we've got to. So now we've got to do like a Fast and Furious matchup with Kong, 
and like they go to like Skull Island and get and like get into all kinds of races with weird like prehistoric no, creatures. No, they have to do it with Transformers. Okay, that that would be better because they're cars. Right. You know what I mean, it'd be better to do it with Transformers and often. Yeah, see, there's there's a good picture of it. Look at that. What did they? Those are their astronauts. They just made them up. You know, just had them lying they around look like minions. Yes, <laughs> that joke was actually said in that movie. That the exact that's, joke was that's said. That's actually the great part about it is they're so self aware. Like they yes. they know what they're doing. Yeah, they know what they're doing. They understand it. They get it, man. Just turn your brain off, Matt, and enjoy the madness that's happening on your screen. Dog. It yeah. makes no sense. Can't do it. Yes, I can't do it. Are we are we done talking about Fast and Furious? We are. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate you, man. Uh, yeah. Big Dave, always rocking the minor league hats. Appreciate Random that. minor league teams. Random minor league teams. I'm all about it. Um, Okie dokie. So today, after yesterday, we finished our player grades for the 21-22 season. Shout out one last time to Tristan and Maddie Legend. We are now today going to do <laughs> evaluations for the Bulls front office and what they did in the 21-22 season. <laughs> are we ready and excited, gentlemen? Yes. Let's do it. Yeah, you go. So your cue, Joey. <laughs> Do it. Kicking it off Just chronologically it. speaking, <laughs> it's the draft. That's the first thing that happens with yes. a fresh season. And in year two, running these Bulls, the Bulls selected, again, did not have a first-round pick because the first of their two firsts conveyed to Orlando mm -hmm. uh, in last year's draft. So in round two, with their pick at 38, they selected the hometown kid. Yes. Io. To Sumu mm -hmm. with the 38th pick. Um, they met with him during their draft scouting process, mm -hmm. and I think there was a collective agreement from AK, from Eversley, from Billy Donovan, that they loved Io to Sumu and assumed that he would not be there for them at 38. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, he was. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Joey, if you want to throw up those grades and uh, take a look at what we have for the draft interesting will i want to know why you gave them a b for drafting io at 38 yeah hater uh <laughs> well i guess i didn't really understood the assignment because i was kind of thinking about this for for both years and so i was incorporating the patrick williams and marco simonovich moves in there if we're just looking at io i mean you definitely have to give that at least an a um at the time i was definitely one of the sharif cooper stands but obviously like when they made that pick, they hadn't yet acquired Lonzo Ball or Al Caruso or Tamar DeRozan. And a move like that is definitely a longer term thing. So uh, Io ended up being like the perfect selection. And then he obviously completely outperformed any sort of expectation you could have. So uh, if we're doing this for, for just last season, that's an A for sure. Yeah. So that, yeah, to clarify, we are not grading AK and Eversley's first two seasons at the helm. We are grading specifically the 21-22 season. Mm -hmm. So I don't want any people complaining about the Vooch trade in the comments. Because <laughs> that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this season that just ended. Yeah. Um, Dave, you and I both gave them an A for IO. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you look at anybody that was taken 39 through 60 – and I could not find one single player, 39 through 60, that I would rather have on this Bulls roster coming into next year and beyond than Io DeSubu. I mean, consistently called the steal of the draft. Uh, not just by us, but around the league. By right. pundits and, and uh, executives and things like that. Um, what we saw him do, again, nobody was really truly expecting him to do, just like the Bulls season. How it right. started off in the first half. Nobody was expecting that. A lot of us was like, you know, he's good. We like him. We don't know if his game – Listen, let me speak for myself. I didn't know if his game was going to translate. I knew his mental would translate because he was a strong-minded dude. Right. And I watched him in college, and he was definitely that kind of guy who was going to get better. You knew that. But I didn't know if his game would translate. You know, his shot was kind of funking, his three, his funky, his three-point shot looked weird. Um, I didn't know if he had the right handles, you know what I'm saying, at that position. But then at the same time, like, well, he won best point guard in college. Mm -hmm. He man won the Bob Cousy Award. Uh, what else do you need? I just didn't see it uh, for myself. And then in summer league, didn't have a great showing. Right. Uh, in summer league. That was, but again, that was the Patrick Williams uh, year. Right. He wasn't even the focus. And we've also seen the opposite effect in summer league where right. a player comes in and right. reigns on summer league. Correct. And then they get to the real league and they can't play for shit. Correct. Valentine. So I think. Um, I didn't say you did. Seeing that and we thought he was going to the G League. That was our first thought. Like, you know, he'll get to the G League. You know, he'll battle uh, Devin Dotson, and, mm -hmm. you know, we'll see what comes out. 
Billy Donovan said, no, I'm the coach. I know a little bit more <laughs> than what you guys are seeing out here. He's ready to go now. And Billy really meant now. And, uh, again, I was surprised that he put him in in the first game of the year. Mm -hmm. And he contributed from the moment he stepped on the floor. And I don't know how you guys are, are watching rookies when you see them for the first time uh, in an in a NBA game. But the first thing I'm looking at is just how they approach it. That's my first thing. Before their shots, before their jump or anything, how do they look on the floor? Do they look like they belong out there? Do they look like they're scared? Do they look like, oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing? Do they look excited? What do they look like? Io's temperament didn't change from game one to game 82. He looked the same way he did in game one, the same way he did in the final game of the year. Like, I'm supposed to be here. Right. I know everything, <laughs> but I don't know anything. And you could say there was a little bit of a rookie wall sure. towards the end, sure. which is natural yeah. once, you know, your opponents have enough sufficient game tape to, you know, have a plan to, to slow you down. Right. And before anybody had any tape on IO, he was blown by guys and finishing you know at an elite level in transition as well as knocking down his open looks and playing very respectable defense and you know his shooting numbers came down a little bit and he looked kind of tired towards the end of the season True. but I, that's nothing to rag him for i don't think no no I'm yeah, not, the I'm tired not the no, tired no. thing for sure is like I, I think that was the biggest thing more so than like or maybe that is the rookie wall um because he's playing like 30 games in college and then all of a sudden he's playing literally 40 minutes a night for stretches with the Bulls, which obviously speaks to how good he was and how much Billy was able to trust him, which you never see from a rookie, you know, competing for a playoff spot. So uh, just the fact that he was able to compete at that high level, obviously, I think he was a little bit over his head for a while. He's averaging like, you know, 12, 6 and 6. So that that's insane. But um, he, he was awesome. I mean, there's there's definitely no no doubting that. And also, you know, like shooting a very high clip from three, which is another thing I didn't expect. Um, and I mean, just just reliable, you know, at the three and helping the Bulls win games. And right. you saw, especially on the defensive end, you saw exactly what his impact could be, especially that's why I'm excited to see this year if Lonzo gets back. Mm -hmm. Because that three-headed monster of Lonzo, Caruso, and Ayo, oh my God. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's, you're locked up. You know what I mean? And that's what made Ayo even more potent out there is he was able to roam he was able to jump passing lanes because he knew certain guys were going to be locked up because Lonzo was there and Caruso was there right he was able to get in people's jerseys way more easier because he didn't have to worry about everything else around him right so all that to say AK and Eversley get an A for drafting Io because yeah, sure. this kid looks like a player and a guy that they absolutely need to keep in Chicago. No question. Draft is pretty simple. Transactions, as we move into that, is a lot more complex because they made a parts. lot of them. Yes, true. So we'll start in transactions. We'll have to take a break at some point to shout out our beloved sponsors. But mm -hmm. let's just take a look quickly here. Thank you, Joey, at oh, all of the moves that AK and Eversley made in the 21-22 season. Um, so starting with the first hours of free agency mm -hmm. was that Lonzo Ball sign and trade. Uh, and if I you don't forgot, think it took an hour. Yeah, right. No, it, it <laughs> took it took roughly thirty seconds, yes. and that's why the Bulls uh, got in a little bit of trouble <laughs> for a little bit of tampering. Uh, it was a second round pick, Garrett Temple and Tom, uh, Tomas Sadoransky in that sign and trade. Thank you, Sato and Temple. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I loved about the Lonzo move uh, from AK and Eversley is the way that they structured his contract. Mm -hmm. Because I was on board with Lonzo after originally being a little skeptical mm -hmm. so long as they didn't overpay yeah. to get him. And I thought that the final figures that we saw when we learned the details of that contract is that there were certain incentives built into it and that there were, without those incentives, a pretty reasonable just base salary mm -hmm. In his, you know, multi-year contract, I did not want to pay Lonzo above twenty mil a year because mm -hmm. I didn't think he was that valuable of a player. Right. And the way that they built his contract, they aren't. Yeah, no, they're not. And I, I personally loved it. I loved all the transactions they did uh, this year. Joey, can you put those back up? Thank you. Um, one, let's look at that. Three signing trades. Let's just look at that part right there. That's amazing right there in itself. Three signing trades. Then you get Lonzo Ball, the point guard that everybody had been craving the Bulls needed to get Lonzo Ball. And then they slid one in on you because nobody was looking at Alex Caruso coming to the Chicago Bulls. 
And when we got him, everybody loved him like we thought that they would. Right. From, from the beginning of the year. You did a sign and trade uh, with Lowry. You picked up Javante, who was like your fringe. Like, even your fringe signings was Javante Green. And, of course, the legend you picked up as well. But your worst things that you did were, what, Tristan Thompson and Tony Bradley. And both of them were big men and also moves made in the name of winning. Which mm-hmm. I told you I don't mind you making the mistake. When you're trying to win. And what's the other thing that they did, Matt? They did another trailer. Oh, yeah, they got DeMar DeRozan <laughs> on the team who had his best year all NBA. Yeah, that guy is on the Chicago Bulls because of that transaction. That For me, that was the A. When, they, when the, the DeMar DeRozan, I was like, period, that's an A. Thoughts yeah, after that, Will? You know, as a whole, I mean, you, you look at this and it's like, the most impressive thing you've ever seen. I think there are like minor, you know, qualms that you could have with uh, the DeMar thing in terms of like having to give that first round pick uh, to the Spurs in 2025, having to give up um, Thaddeus Young in that deal and another second round pick. Like that's a lot to pay. And so I understood the reservations about signing him, but he clearly, like the result of that clearly outperformed any sort of worry that you might have about, you know, whether he was worth the $28 million contract, the picks and that, like, obviously the answer was yes. Um, same thing with, uh, with the Lonzo signing, as you mentioned, Matt, it's a, I think a million dollars per season in incentives for playing more than 60 games, 65 games and having uh, potentially an uh, all defensive team. So that'll end up probably being 76 million over four years, uh, which I, again is super reasonable. Uh, obviously, that also cost them a pick in the form of a, a fine for tampering. Um, but again, like as I've said before, these moves are great. They picked a direction and then they like they said, okay, these like theoretical assets or like future draft picks that could or could not be good are not worth as much as having talent today on our roster. And I think that was really the big shift for me that that put this um, over the top. And then I, I want to talk more about Caruso too, because I think like pound for pound, that was that might have been the best signing where they didn't have to give up anything to get him. No draft picks, no players, uh, you know, going out. And then you also use uh, the mid-level exception to sign him. So you still retain that cap space where they were able to go out and get DeRozan. Um, and then, you know, Caruso obviously outperformed his deal. So I think he's uh, 37 million over four years and then a fourth year team option with 3 million guaranteed. So just incredible job with these, uh, the Lowry Markinen deal where they really held firm and, and were able to get some assets back for a guy that they knew was not going to be on their team. Uh, that was awesome. I think the the biggest issue for me was the the fringe signings, the back end depth. Um, Javante was obviously great. Tony Bradley kind of unplayable, and that forced them into signing Tristan Thompson, uh, which I think we all agree was you know not a good signing. Um, and just given the fact that they had so many injuries, their lack of bench depth was kind of on display, and we saw that in the playoffs. They weren't really able to overcome. Uh, drafting IO certainly helps, but uh, I think you have to ding them there just a little bit. Yeah, and so three, as you mentioned, Dave, sign and trades in one offseason were listed in that graphic. It was actually four with Daniel Tice, right. which right. is one of the few resources that the Bulls have at their disposal coming into this offseason is the you know trade player exception from the Tice move. Yeah. So they executed four sign and trades in one offseason. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like I said this, half jokingly on the bear show just now when they were kind of asking me, you know, what's going on in bulls nation and my thoughts on AK and Eversley. Mm -hmm. And I said, I am very happy with what they've done so far. Did you see what they did last off season? Cause they made four sign and trades in one off season. Their predecessors didn't know what a sign and trade was. Didn't know. Never saw it. What's sign and trade? How do, how do I find my way out of this paper bag? It's incredible what they did. (laughs) Like, yes, it was expensive with sign-and-trade stuff the way that they needed to get DeMar here, but they got DeMar here. They got Lonzo here, and maybe they did it a little aggressively, but (laughs) you know what that's better than doing? Not trying. (laughs) 
And but, you mentioned the Lowry sign and Trey Will, and I just wanted to hammer that point a little bit more because I know that Pecking. as we were doing our, our player grades for Derek Jones Jr. Mm -hmm. just you know last week, we were kind of lamenting, I would have loved to get Larry Nance in that trade instead of DJJ because it looked this season like Larry Nance was a much more usable piece yeah. for his team than DJJ was for us. And okay, yeah, that's fine. If you want to nitpick, nitpick. They still got a player in DJJ who did some decent things for the Bulls this year before his shot went cold with a broken thumb. Um, but they also got that protected pick from Portland. Yeah. It didn't convey this year. But, you know, we were just talking with our pal Hyken last week, so, who is in the know with Portland, and everything that's going on in Portland looks like they're going to try to quickly make that team competitive around Dame again. Yeah. So the Bulls have that pick. No one wanted Lowry Markkinen on the free agent market last summer. He was like the last busted-up-looking, uh, you know, deviled egg on a tray at a party that no one wants. <laughs> no offense. Y'all know I used to be the biggest Lowry lover in the world. But that's what Lowry was on the free agent market last summer. Yeah. No one wanted him, and the Bulls were able to get something for him as a free agent. In a sign and trade, the Bulls got a future first for a dude who was the last deviled egg on the tray. And remember, they tried to give him to San Antonio mm -hmm. originally, and San Antonio said, nah, we're good. You know, give us that. And that's why I like what the – that's why I like the front office so much. And I've said this to you before – is they don't let those kind of things stop them from getting what they want. Right. They're, they're willing to go ahead. And you know they did not. <laughs> Joey is stupid. You know they did not want to give up uh, Thad Young. None of us wanted to give up Thad Young. We yeah. wanted Thad Young here. The minute he left, all we looked at was the void that was left by him. It's true. And we cried about it <laughs> mercilessly all the way through the trade deadline because we wanted Thad Young. But they didn't let them stop them from getting an elite basketball player. That would have been the mistake. I love Thad Young, but the mistake would have been to pass on DeMar DeRozan for Thad Young. That would have been the mistake. And they said, no, you know what? This is worth it. We'll bite the bullet. We'll come back and try to do something better next year. Yeah, I mean, the, the NBA is all about top-end talent. So when you have a chance to get the best player in a deal, you take it. And even though that means giving up a – incredibly great leader in the locker room and you know i mean that was more than a role player with the bulls last season but that's kind of what he is as a role player so anytime you're able to turn you know a draft pick and a role player into a first team second team all nba guy you do it and then you figure out the rest later uh as i said before like you do have to fill out the bench and that that counts for something but uh first and foremost you got to get the talent yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, Joey, you want to throw those grades up real quick uh, before we move on? So those transaction grades from the three of us, uh, Will and I both with a B plus. Dave, you gave him an A. Yeah. I like anybody that wants to give him an A for their transactions this season. I have no issue with that because of all of the talent that we just talked about them bringing in. Right. Uh, in in creative ways, I went with a B plus instead of an A because to me there is still room for improvement. Fair. You know having to give up that in the DeMar thing. And then as Will pointed out, I also agree the, the fringe signings, Javante fantastic fringe signing. And he filled in dutifully in a role that he probably didn't see himself playing the season. Oh, he did not. But when the bulls started to get hit by the injury bug, you saw some of the more unusable pieces they had rounding out their roster. And that's why I went with a B plus instead of an A. Will. Yeah, uh, same same thing for me. I mean, you take some big swings to try to bring in talent, and uh, you could argue that you know the Demar, even the Lonzo, was kind of an overpay in some ways. Um, it's hard for me to really separate even the Vooch deal at the deadline last year from some of these, where you're giving up two future picks and Wendell Carter. I think that like you could kind of lump in as far as you know picking a direction and going with it. Like that was the first move, the first domino of this current plan. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's fair to consider those an overpay, but that's kind of how you have to get talent when you don't have any. And so that can lead you to making some mistakes on the back end, which I think is kind of what pushed it down for me. But at the same time, like you're not going to hit on everything. So uh, the fact that like uh, easily more than 80% of these were hits is like pretty amazing. Um, it wasn't perfect. I think an A is, is overall like super perfect. Um, so it wasn't quite there for me, but like 
you know, like you said, Matt, I mean, these are, these are small nitpicky things, but when you're trying to compete for a championship, you got to nitpick, uh, you got to be the best. So, um, that, that was my thought there. Well said. Uh, all right. We'll move on to our meathead grades in just a minute, right. but first got to give a shout out to our friends at points bet. The best way to support CHGO is to download that points bet app and use code CHGO. When you sign up, if you do that right now, you're going to get those two risk-free bets up to $2,000, but that's not all. If you make it $50 or more first time deposit with that CHGO uh, promo code, you will receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our amazing web content, including all of these uh, column grade, player grades that Will is doing and the one that he just teased you about a few minutes ago with AK and Eversley's transactions. Uh, plus a free t-shirt from our CHGO locker, including this dope bears one that I'm rocking that today. Cause I was on the bear I show. I just ordered that one too. Hell and access to our private members only discord channels. One for each team, one for each CHGO show. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's also points bet your home for live in game betting, Boom. which just got even better. Introducing points bets, new feature, the live NBA, same game parlay. Hey. I hit one during game five of Celtics heat last night. Did you? Uh, it was a weird, there ugly game at halftime, 42, 37. Yeah. And I said, I'm rolling with the C's. So mm -hmm. I made a little C's, a C's heavy, same game parlay at halftime. And I game. hit myself on it. Mm-hmm. I feel good. You feel nice. You always feel good when you hit those same game parlays on points bet. Why not? Plus, now you can also boost those live same game parlays, which you know I did too. Watch live parlay live, boost live all with points bet. And now all of you folks out there living in Illinois land, you can sign up right on your phone. Create an mm. account and start betting all from your phone yes. if you live in Illinois with online sign up. So once the game starts, don't just bet. Big Dave, tell them what to do. You live your bed life. Oh, my God. Ah! Woo! I feel like you just wrapped me up in a big cozy blanket mm. with that little mm. jingle. Mm. Stacey, Stacey King work. comes on the podcast one time, and you just whip out the gold pipes. <laughs> I was going to do the just do it song, but no, can't do it after it was, that. No, that, that, was, was, that, was, that was beautiful. That was too much of like a lullaby-style jingle to interrupt it with – you know, cracked out Shia LaBeouf. No, I didn't want to step on Will's toes, man. So I was going to do something different. I was like, let me just do something different because, you know, when Millennium delivers his, it'd be on point. So yeah. I had to do something different, man. Uh, shout out real quick to Rob in the comments who said, you learned so much in that CHGO Discord and stay up to date living in another state. So Ooh. any of you people in Bulls Nation who aren't locals, CHGO Discord. Discord is where it at. Oh, here's something else for y'all that ain't locals that everybody can get. And that is at athletic greens it is something everybody should have with them why not just because it tastes good why not just because it's affordable but because of those 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods those probiotics and those adaptogens that help you start your day right that special blend of ingredients that supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, and your aging. All of those awesome things that you need to have on point in your life, you got it right here with Athletic Greens, man. Lifestyle friendly, supports better sleep and quality, mental clarity and alertness, man. All of this is there. And over 7,000 five-star reviews, but there's only one review that truly, truly matters, and that is from the GOAT. That man, Will Gottlieb, sir. Please tell them how much you love that Athletic Greens. I love it, man. I keep telling you. I uh, brought it with me to Brazil. I have it every morning. Keeps me fresh, uh, you know. Make sure that I'm feeling good, living my bet life down here. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it just tastes great. It's a great way to start your day and make sure that you're feeling healthy. So I love it. Got the travel packs, brought them down with me. It's been great so far. That's right. In my head, he's standing on a balcony, just looking at the sun in the morning, just holding mm. that athletic greens, drinking it down, man, while that wind whips through that amazing head of hair that he has. It's amazing. That's how I'm picturing it going. Yeah, that's down. how I'm picturing it, too. But Will has told us on more than one occasion that he's like, it's kind of getting towards winter down here. <laughs> I'm like, I'll nah, dude, you're, you're, you're down a, living the tropical bet outside. life. Okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Hey. There it is. Look at that great yeah. shot. Flex on him, Will. Flex on him. Show of, him that uh, view. Of downtown. <laughs> of what, what is it? Pelotas? Is that the name of the city? You're Pelotas. In? Pelotas. There you go. That's where he's at, y'all. And you don't have to be downtown Pelotas to enjoy this. You 
right there at your home can get delivered right to you, y'all. So make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of that immune-supporting vitamin D and that one, two, three, four, fifth travel packs, y'all. Five of them things free with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Bulls to sign up and get that. Again, athleticgreens.com slash CHGO Bulls to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Athletic Greens. Dump it. Wait, scoop it, dump it, drink it, shake it. Feel it. Look at oh, that. He's Look at that. It. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> he had it ready to go for Joey me. Joey has it for you. I love Joey, man. See, Joey's <laughs> reading me now, man. Chicken, drink, and feel it. I love you too, I told Dave. him early on, I was like, don't worry. You, it's going to come. Right? You, you, we gonna, it's going to get there, yep. man. It's just going to get there with the repetition. He getting there, man. Like, well, Look at that. All you got to do is just make a graphic for Big Dave's slogan that he came up That's with. That's it. Sound, and it's smart. It's a smart thing to do, sir. Well done. Well done, Joey. Uh, as we move along and get to our meathead grade, shout out to G. Witt in the comments. G. Witt. Love G. Witt. Always up, been man? around. He said, been a minute since I've watched. Glad y'all have off-season content. Oh. Five days a week, G. Witt. Fear. We here, hanging out. Five shows a week, all off-season. Monday, Tuesday, yeah, Wednesday, used to it. Thursday, Friday. We'll probably get sick of us by the time we're ready to start a new season. Um, Never. <laughs> <laughs> no in the comments saying, we lost Levine, bro. And then I went and I was like, what are you talking about? No, nothing. <laughs> Put down the sauce, Noah. Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, man. But whatever it is, it ain't true. It ain't true, man. Uh, all it. right. So speaking of crazy things that fans do and say, meathead grades for the Bulls front office pairing of AK and Eversley. Let's take a look. Big Dave, I know, I already know what yours stands you know what for. Is, man. Will, do you know what Big Dave stands for? I'm drawing a blank. Okay. Well, it's he just, says it a lot. I've said it so many times. It's so many hashtags that I put up about it. I've yelled at Bulls fans this all season in the off season, Matt. It was when I first started doing Locked On Bulls and Matt. I came in hot like this, talking about this to people. And what it is, let them cook. Mm. Let them dudes cook, man. Get your ass out the kitchen and let <laughs> them cook. Let them chef it up. Serve it up, man. That's what they did. So they gave you our meal, right, for the mm -hmm. regular season. Mm -hmm. Pretty damn tasty, I mm -hmm. thought. I thought it was delicious. Some of the stuff was a little too much salt in it. You know what I'm saying? Some of the things. But what is going to happen, he's going back to the kitchen. He's going to improve on what he gave out there and give you something new. It's more nourishment is coming, y'all. So let them cook. Get up out the way. Let them hook hook it up. Fry it up. Fry it. Diet. Lay it to the side. Maybe you know scoop it and shake it. Yes. <laughs> Do it, man. Red beans and gravy. I ain't too lazy. Come on with it, man. Let them cook. See, even the people in the comments was getting. They know. It, man. Yeah. Cream corn knows. Know. Rob knows. Yeah. They know. I was on that, man. Let them cook. Let them dudes cook, man. And again, they are back in the kitchen right now. Can't wait to see what they bring out. I love that. I love Thank that you. Said. I love that you said put a little too much salt on it. Sometimes that was. My favorite part. I mean, yeah, every everything Dude. wasn't perfect. You know, you got Tristan here, like you said, Tony Bradley there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everything wasn't perfect. You know, some people don't like well, parsley. Like, some people don't like Maddie Legend. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like some people don't like parsley on there. I personally do. I love it. So hey, it happens. It's also understanding that Bulls fans and a significant portion of them were hesitant, uh, were skeptical. Because look, a lot of us had PTSD and just yes. assumed that just because they replaced people that were terrible chefs that served us burnt inedible food every day <laughs> that the new people were going to do anything different. That's why you had Bulls fans honestly believing and whining on Twitter about, oh, they're not even going to get rid of he who must not be named. Mm -hmm. They're not going to fire the bald head of menace. He's going to stay. A couple of columns from people on the beat suggesting that there was an outside chance, a remote possibility of that happening, <laughs> and half of Bulls nation was like, oh, my God, I can't believe we're keeping Jim. I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Give him a second. <laughs> Give him an actual second. Let him, let him set and up. And then what happened? The date that the regular season would have theoretically ended, they fired his ass. Goodbye. <laughs> Get out of there. Get out of there. Wasn't that a great day? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Thank oh, you, Joey. Joey, yes. Thank you. Um, yes. 
Alex in the comments say best front office in Chicago sports. Look, it's a low bar yeah. to be the best front office in Chicago sports. <laughs> but number right one now. is number one. Number but one I think is number the Bulls one. Bulls might have the best one right now. Number one's number one, baby. We will take that. And it's the truth. It is. It really is. Uh, all right. So, Mr. Gottlieb, what is your meathead grade? I look at it, it and I want to say, like, it, I, I see that and I think both of them. Like when you're saying both, both of them, yeah, like both, both of them, yeah. but it's both. Uh. Yeah. Well, we know him, man. Will is, is very specific in particular about his, spe- his spellings. You right. Know what I mean, so it ain't going to be none of that. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be the right word there. So I don't think it's that. Uh, back on free agency or. Ooh, I, I like that, but uh, not quite. Okay. Uh, uh, boy, old fans. Out there, I'm getting know. colder. You're I getting got, colder. No, I, <laughs> I got, I'm drawing a blank, man. Bulls. I'll tell you. Okay. It is a breath of fresh air. Oh, that's what that this is dream great. has been. That is great. It has been a breath of fresh air. You can nitpick about some of the back end stuff or overpaying, but like the fact that they're making moves and picking a direction and taking swings on guys and going over the cap and understanding how to use their mid-level exception and you know sign guys above the cap and taking the risk uh, to bring in a guy like DeMar DeRozan, making sure that you can get talent in there so that when Zach Levine's uh, free agency comes around, there's a reason for him to stay in town. Everything they've done has been a breath of fresh air. They have taken risks they've taken chances all in the name of trying to get winning basketball back in chicago and for me that is a breath of fresh air mm, i love that that's beautiful man mine is uh somewhat in line with will as far as the the vibe the feeling the thought uh, either of you care to venture a guess uh uh happy <laughs> i don't know i don't know what that is to be honest with you Help. will Hell, <laughs> God! If you listen, uh, he likes like, ramen. You said you said vibes and feels, so I'm thinking like hang loose, relax, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love. Are I you love just like, that guy. Are you just like chilling down there? I, well, you know, that is very much in line with my summer peck vibes. That is, that's true. That's true. Uh, but no, and just in the sense of you feeling like this uh, season and the work that the front office did was a breath of fresh air. My meathead grade is, hey, look, real management. <laughs> Isn't that a breath like of fresh that air? Than hang loose, relax, man. We got to know who we're dealing with. Um, we like, like that is Pex relaxing. It's saying something like that. Hey, look, it's not no idiots. It's, they, it's, they know it's what relax doing. pack, and it's also petty pack at the same time. Correct. Correct. Hey, look, hey, real look, management. Man, What's that it's like? Summer pack down there, Lake Michigan, hanging in the sand, yep. just knowing Zach Levine's coming back. Hang loose, yeah. man. And still taking digs at Gar and Pax when I can. <laughs> and when I feel like it. He can't help it. He can't help it. But he's right. Hey, look, real management. Like, how many times, Matt, did we say, oh, my God, look at the competency that's happening right now. They are continuously competent, and they are straightforward. Everything they have said they wanted to do, they've either done it or have failed trying to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's competent. They haven't lied you can't you can't hear anything about them in the news, you know. Everybody thinks they know something or a leak that's coming out. No, there's no leaks. You know what I mean? They holding out right. here. You know what I mean? Like it's great. It just feels great. It really does. That's why I love it. Yeah. Like it's you know at least like you said, especially like even if they try something and it doesn't quite work out. You can always at least see the logic behind it. Yes. They came in, they evaluated what they inherited, decided they didn't like most of it, and then <laughs> flipped most of it. Uh, they saw after a season of evaluating where the weaknesses on the roster were, what the weaknesses in their schemes were, and then went out and made a made a transaction and brought in players that addressed those weaknesses. Yeah. We don't get to the free throw line a lot. We don't have quality isolation scoring. Here's DeMar DeRozan. Our perimeter defense is pretty crappy. Hey, here's Lonzo and Caruso. Logical. Yeah. Logical. And Not, you know, hey, we're going to get more athletic and add some shooters around Jimmy. Here's Wade and Rondo. <laughs> we'll never let it go. No. Listen, here's something else that they did that, that just always was just awesome to me. I'm just, I'm just so blown with it. Also, they made other teams better. 
Like, they sent those players to places that helped other teams. You know what I mean? Like, Cleveland is a better team because of Lowry. Lowry fits there. You know what I mean? On that squad. You know, he fits there quite nicely. Everything's not on him. They're not dependent upon him. Be great. He just wants to be a part of winning. He doesn't want to be the reason for it. He's in the right place for that. They send Wendell down to Orlando. Hey, you're not a sinner. You, hey, you know what we also got down here? We got a vision plan. So, <laughs> so how about we get you some glasses? Damn so plan. You can see. <laughs> Lisa needs braces. Damn plan. <laughs> so they also gave you something there. You know what I mean? They're like, here, we're going to help you out. Let's give you a guy that can thrive in that kind of system that you have, man. They helped. And then they helped uh, the Raptors, shockingly, because there was to be in San Antonio, but San Antonio, for some reason, didn't want to play that young. They sent him to the Raptors. He helps them. You know, they get to the playoffs. I thought that he helped everybody, well, most of, uh, most of everybody that he sent these players to, man. He helped make them better basketball teams. Will, and anything to add there? All, and the whole time he was also making the Bulls better. You know, yes. like that. Yes. That's that's the point. And I, this kind of like leads me into my overall grade and why it was higher than any of my individual things. But it's just like, the commitment to a vision. Like we're not guessing anymore if they're ever going to make a move, what kind of move they're going to make, what direction are we going to go? Are these draft picks going to pan out? Like, are we ever going to actually jump into the top four? Or are we just going to get the seventh pick every year? Right. Like they picked a lane and they stuck with it. And they, in doing so, they established a new culture. Basketball in Chicago is now being taken seriously. They are back in the playoffs. It may not be perfect, but it is pretty damn close. And I think just having that change and not being able to, uh, not being afraid to try to be good is just, yeah, take it back to the meathead grade. It's a breath, breath of fresh air. Yeah. So, you know, you guys both gave him an A overall. Dave, you gave him an A as well overall. Yes. I, I, I still went with a B plus because kind of like you were saying earlier, Will, they made a lot of great moves to make the top end of the roster a lot better than it was, mm -hmm. but to really be a quality team that's still playing now from the end of May into June, your roster needs to be damn near perfect, yeah. and it needs to be deep at every position. And there were some flaws in that regard that exposed the Bulls at the back end of the season and in their one playoff series. So as someone who grew up on championships and wants championships and wants championship roster – they were they did a really really good job this season mm -hmm. but to get an a from me you need to build a championship roster mm. this is not yet a championship roster mm, man it's tough on him right there he's like you but give me a championship i give you an i a. say that I while like also it. feeling like i would happily throw these guys a parade <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> because they are so much freaking better than the people who held the jobs before them oh my god that ever and needs to be said one more time I think that's a great point, Matt. And I, I think the reason for me that I didn't give him an A plus is kind of along those lines where you've made this team so much better. And it's really hard to get from like seventh seed, you know, seventh pick in the draft up to seventh seed in the East or sixth seed, where, wherever they ended. That's a huge jump. And I think for me, obviously they're not quite good enough to be playing right now. And I'm not sure, maybe they can figure something out. For this offseason to be able to get there but what makes it difficult now is that they've given up so many assets it's going to be hard to acquire more talent and i'm really looking forward to see how they do that because i believe they will like they didn't do anything the first offseason right they wanted to evaluate trade deadline and offseason they made a ton of moves because they were like all right let's do this we're all in mm -hmm. and then this past trade deadline it's another thing we didn't talk about in terms of transactions is that they didn't do anything. Um, and they relied on Tristan Thompson and the buyout market. Um, we'll see what kind of like back end of the roster veteran minimum guys they can bring in. I mean, I think they're a destination now, just being a, a great city and a serious franchise, they'll, they'll get some guys, uh, but they do have limited assets now to go get more top end talent and push everybody else down, uh, which is, I think what they kind of need to do. So, very, very curious and excited to see what happens this offseason. I think it's going to tell us a lot about the future of the team. But um, definitely, I think, a reason for me to avoid the A+. Plus. Look, at, look at Will giving us a perfect little tease for our final segment today, which That's is going to be 
looking at what AK and Eversley's to-do list is this offseason and the resources they have at their disposal. Mm. That's a great tease, Will. That's what he Good does. job. I learned, bef- I learned from Segway Peck. Hey. There you go. There you go. But before that, uh-huh. Big Dave hit him with a points pass. I think I shall. Because if you enjoy CHGO and what we do right up in here, one way to help us to continue to grow mm-hmm. is to download that PointsBed mm-hmm. app and use that code CHGO when you sign up. Because not only are you going to get those two, count them, one, two, risk-free bets up to $2,000. But if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, guess what you're going to get? That's the dramatic pause. You'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of that awesome web content. And you'll even get a free T-shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. Like this amazing one this gentleman has on right here. Like my one my man Joey has on right oh, there. Oh, Joey's got the, the Bulls one. one. The Bulls cursive joint. Six it's one. official whistle out there. I like it. And all the people in this beautiful state of Illinois. It's wonderful city of Chicago where the weather is warming up just slightly outside, but not enough for me to be okay rocking a sweatshirt and shorts, baby. And peep the shoes, too, baby. Peep the purple tapes right here. Them like that. Them nights right there. You can actually download the PointsBed app right now and register your account from start to finish all from your phone. You'll be signing up with the fastest sports book easier than ever so you can start living your bet life in seconds. So what are you waiting for? Uh Uh-huh. Because once the game starts... You don't just bet. We're the thrill. Tell them what they do. You live that bet life. Joey. With points bet. <laughs> ah! Hello. I like money. <laughs> I love what Joey panics for half a second and then just Yo. makes up some sound effect <laughs> with his own mouth. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Watching it is even funnier. <laughs> Seeing it happen was even funnier. You no, know, I'm a, you know I'm a, like a multitasker. I've got a lot going on. I've got, got a lot going on. Got a lot of things happening, man. You know who I'm guessing also has a lot going on, and they're multitasking. And one of their multitaskers is watching our show right now is Jack in the comments, oh. who said one year ago today Reggie Miller hit a game winner against MJ and the Bulls, and then he added. Uh, asterisk yes one year ago yesterday and me and a few other people in the comments going one year ago you sure jack i feel a lot older than than i was when i watched reggie miller hit that shot a little bit and then he went and fixed it it was like uh a 34, 34 years, years ago, ago. yeah <laughs> my bad my and bad. so i saw that there was a video of that going viral around nba twitter yesterday and a whole bunch of bulls fans were quote tweeting it being like and then what happened yeah did mj guarantee victory in yeah. game seven isn't that the best and then one game seven uh-huh isn't that the best about that stuff when somebody wants to put that stuff up about the 90s bulls and you're like oh yeah yeah, yeah that's like and then yeah. what happened yeah. <laughs> and then what continue like, the story every year that Knicks fans like celebrate the Starks dunk you know anniversary he never mm. dunked on Jordan then, it was not a dunk on Jordan and then, and then what happened and then what happened uh, <laughs> all right so let's let's move on now to our AK and Eversley offseason projection what's their to-do list what do they have to work with um so to me number one it's obvious mm-hmm. you sign Zach Levine you yep. keep him here that's what you do you get Zach uh, beyond that, I, I put down support Lonzo and Zach in their respective knee rehabs mm. in any way you can. That's a good one. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what will go into their respective offseason uh, recoveries. Lonzo is already several weeks and months into his. Fair. Uh, apparently, his dad thinks he needs to be in a pool more. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but, you know, like, I, we just need both of those guys to be at 100% at the start of next season for them to be as competitive and more competitive than they were this year. Like, it's that simple. They need Zach and Lonzo to be healthy. That's it. I mean, it's. I mean, number one is it, it should be gaps in between number one and everything else right, right there. Yeah, right? that's obviously that is your clearing one. away. Yeah, you get him. Um, but the one I also like that you have up there, Matt, is rim protector. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's a big deal uh, for these Bulls is getting that rim protector because we saw that uh, when we were looking at the transactions, those were the two that stood out as the ones – Either one was like that was the Tristan or the Tony Bradley. Right, those were the two main ones that really, really hurt you and put a lot more pressure on Vooch, which in turn put a lot more hate on Vooch. Right, uh, from Bulls Nation and things like that. So yeah, they they definitely need some help with that. Uh, look at my guy uh, from the Knicks who, who put down Patrick Williams. I'd rather have him uh, on the team, Mr. Robinson. Um, so yeah, you can get something like that and also some shooting. I think shooting will be very, very key. Will uh, mm-hmm. getting some of that three point shooting. 
uh, here for the Bulls because they were sorely lacking that and sorely needing it uh, to the point they had to put the legend out there, give him heavy minutes, man. And, you know, he was a liability defensively, but they needed some three-point shooting from somewhere, and that was definitely a problem in the second half of the year uh, for the Chicago Bulls, Will. So, yeah, I, I think those are the two things that stand out for me. I think, you know, they have a bunch of if-they-could-shoot guys. That's what I call them. You know, if Javante was a little bit more consistent, if Derek Jones could shoot, he would have been – a great player to have, you know, playing heavier minutes, but you just couldn't rely on him. And even Io and Caruso, to a certain extent, fell into that role um, down the stretch of last season, where the, the shot just wasn't falling. So, totally agree. I think you need, you know, and this this is much easier said than done because every team is looking for these guys, and this is why they drafted Patrick Williams. But they need a, a big three or four who can shoot the ball and defend at a high level, and maybe play some small ball five. I think that is what every team covets, but it's also kind of the biggest weakness of the Bulls right now is that they just don't have that guy. And maybe Patrick turns into that. Um, I I don't think this is something that like is on the off season to-do list for Arturis and uh, Eversley here, but like that is the biggest thing for the Bulls is like making sure that Patrick Williams turns into a very solid starter um, in this league, if not better. So uh, that would solve a lot of these problems in terms of having a backup stretch four or a three and D wing or a rim protector, because you're just able to be a lot more versatile, but to your point, back end, back end depth, uh, you know, bigger wings and shooting, uh, just, you saw it during, during the playoffs when they, they were like four for 52 on threes in game five against the bucks. There's just, they need guys to shoot. And when Kobe white isn't hitting shots, you know, it's not working for you. So, they got to do something there and then you know even swinging for the fences and thinking a little bit bigger like is there another star that they could bring in that would move everybody else down a spot or complement zach and damar in a way that sort of makes the the high-end depth better on the or the high-end talent on the team better so that there is more depth at the bottom um so there's a lot of different ways they could they could look at this stuff but uh in terms of like the actual things on the floor that we need to see those are those are the big three for me as well yeah so like to me if you can add what the reason I threw in backup stretch four and or three and D wing is ideally you you add a player like one of those two things or both of those two things who can like uh accountability wise knock down threes yeah because you've got some three-point shooting in your backcourt if your backcourt is healthy Lonzo can shoot threes Zach is lethal Io proved to be a confident three-point shooter in the NBA in his rookie year, and hopefully he continues to build on that. Kobe is more of a question mark, as we discussed in his player eval, the fact that he might not be around next season. But so your backcourt, you've got a decent amount of shooting. You need three-point shooting from those other positions, as well as hoping that Vooch, your stretch big in your starting lineup, can start to knock down at a better clip than he did with a, you know, a career, well, not a career low, but from when he built his three-point shooting up, a down year and then the same thing with pat like you just need to find reliable three-point shooting all up and down your roster yeah very true um and so uh if you take a look at that one more time to see what exactly the bulls front office has to work with to try and fill out this roster so they're going to make a pick at 18 assuming they don't trade that pick on draft night right um as of now it is the 2023 portland pick that is still lottery protected so if they head back to the lottery next season then it will get pushed back again. They've got the player, the trade player exception from the Daniel Tice sign and trade from last offseason, mid level. And then, you know, we'll mention the sort of like, you know, veteran minimum fringe things that they might be able to, to scrounge together. It's not a lot to work with. They're going to have to get creative to improve this roster from the roster we saw this season. Um, I, I'm excited. I'm curious. And I can't wait to see how they do it. Yeah. And the other I thing, I think another. I was just going to say another quick note there is the resources that they don't have, which are the 2023 pick, uh, their own 2023 pick, top um, four protected going to the Magic and the Vooch trade, and then the 2025 pick, top 10 protected, Five. going to so the Spurs assuming for the Assuming the 23 pick conveys to Orlando, and then they're done with the Orlando mm-hmm. debt, then San Antonio kicks in with the year after that because of the step and roll. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I think also, guys, another thing about this is teams know who they are now. And they have an idea about who the – they're not catching anyone off guard, kind of how they did in the first half of the season. 
And we saw in the second half, you know, the Bulls shooting was bad, but teams kind of caught up to them and saw what they needed to do to, uh, you know, how to beat this team. So, uh, AK and Eversley, I'm sure they have this in mind, you know, when they're going out there in free agency about, you know, what they need to get, but also how they can give them more options, you know, on the offensive end. What players can give them more options on the offensive end uh, to do different things and not just do the same thing over and over again, either from, you know, lack of players on their team or because they just didn't have, you know, certain guys who could do certain things out there. So, yeah, they'll be, I think they'll be looking at that too, man, because, yeah, teams are looking at them. Team, you're on the radar now, which is where you want it to be because you damn sure weren't there for the past four or five years. So you're on team's radar now. They're looking at you. And, yeah, I can't wait to see how the Bulls respond. And I think the last thing I have here is, you know, to your point, Dave, the Bulls are willing to make moves now. Like, they, they know kind of who they are. But they also have such a creative front office. Like nobody thought it was a good idea to make Demar, you know, the number one option on your team in his age 32 season, or you know, go out and trade for a 32 year old Nikola Vucevic to be your number two. Like they have a, a creative viewpoint on guys, and I think that that will really serve them well. Where like the media and like especially some of like the national media kind of looks at this stuff and they say, oh well, this guy isn't a top 10 player it's not worth going to get him. But I think the Bulls front office has shown that they are creative enough to, to sort of imagine different ways to be successful and that using that creativity, they'll be able to find the right talent. Um, and I saw in the comments, uh, G Witt asking to clarify the protections on that Portland pick because the Bulls can trade that pick mm. that they have coming to them from Portland if they want to. Okay. So they do have that as a resource. Um, and when that trade went down, I, I just pulled up Woj's tweet from uh, August 27th when this happened of last year. Portland sends that lottery-protected pick to Chicago. Um, it is protected 1 through 14 until 2028. Mm. If it does not convey by 2028, it becomes a second-round pick in 2028. So we just need the Blazers to make the playoffs sometime between now and 2028. That's Nice amount of time. Ideally, yeah. do it, get there sooner. Uh, <laughs> um, or cash in on it before then. Or, yeah. Or you can cash in on it before that. Yeah. So many options. Mm. I like it. When was the last time we've had actual good options? I love this that. Thing, man. I like it. I like it a lot. Also, before we get out, I just, not to tug you too hard, Jack, but when he corrected himself and said, oh, no, it wasn't one year ago. It was 34 years ago that Reggie hit that shot. He's mad about 34 is also not correct, because uh, I just thought about that for a second. I was like, wait, I wasn't one year old when Reggie hit that shot. <laughs> I was 11 years old. That happened 24 years ago, not 34 years ago. Oh, Go back man. to math class, Jack. Oh, man. We love you, Jack. We love you. Thanks for being here, man. Also, I'm bad at math. It took me a second to figure out that that was still wrong. <laughs> no, you just believed in him. That's all. Because when he said it, it sounded wrong. I was like, you know what? Not going gonna, gonna to go in on you, Jack. And then here comes Matt. <laughs> Being who he is. He's got to be who he is, people. You got to be a peacock. Just had, had a little bit of petty left over leave, after, after yelling at the old front office yes. a few times. <laughs> yes. Hey, gotta, yeah. hang loose, man. Relax. <laughs> hang loose, man. Relax. <laughs> That's the new catchphrase for CHGO Bulls summertime content. Classic summer hang pack. loose, man. Relax. Summer pack all day. I love that. Uh, Will, good to see you in the bubble as always, my friend. Follow Will great and get all of his great Bulls content on that allchgo.com website by following him on Twitter at Won't Gottlieb. Dave's at Bow, BWL Sports on Bulls underscore Peck. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. We'll be back with one more episode for y'all tomorrow. It's Friday fun oh. tomorrow. Oh. And we got some real fun planned for you guys. We can't wait to do it. Join us. Uh, we're going to do a little drafting, but mm. we're not going to tell you what kind of draft. Mm. You got to tune in tomorrow to find out. Oh, So until on, then, come hang out. Be well. Yes. And uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow for Will, for Dave, for our producer, Joey, Joey. Peck saying thanks for listening. See you right. Be good.